find his way in through that brush. A lot of his hair here. Like he just patted his place down. He probably used it repeatedly. Do you have a good view of the day bed and myself? It's right on the day bed. Okay. Too zoomed in. Okay, green light on, record? Yeah. Okay, you're a go. This twig is in the way. This twig's fine. Good evening, my name is Tim Mallow, I'm a graduate student at the University of Central Florida, doing my master's thesis on dispersals of juvenile bobcats through a corridor. And uh, today is November 16th. Two days ago, I found one of my cats, number eight, a large male tom at 28 pounds, dead at this spot. This is a day bed. The cat was shot by a hunter or somebody with high-powered rifle probably two or three days before he actually died. He was alive on Wednesday, today is Saturday, uh, and he was active. On Thursday, I came out and did, uh, sought to obtain his radio location when I discovered that the pulse on his transmitter had doubled in rate, indicating that the mortality sensor had been activated, which means that he had been dead for more than five hours. Um, I got a fix on his position and uh, determined that the location was at this point. It took me 45 minutes to actually find him in here uh, because this is the back side of a, a brush pile, as you can see, um, almost impenetrable to investigators from most sides, except the side that I'm looking out of right now, which is the open face. This is a classic bobcat day bed. You can see the black padding, the black padding here, uh, which, which is just dirt. That's where he was lying. His hair is there. Obviously, he died here. Um, he probably had the gunshot wound for a few, a couple days, and uh, probably died Wednesday evening. Uh, and um, after he crawled into this day bed to try to nurse his wounds or deal with his pain. Um, he was about a quarter mile from here the day before, so he did walk quite a ways to get in here. Um, you see it's very comfortable. Uh, it's probably pretty dry, fairly dry when it rains. Um, again, it's a brush pile of, of fallen logs debris, uh, um, limbs, uh, there's briar uh, vines growing all over the top and back sides of it. Very secluded, but it's only 50 yards, about 50 yards from the dirt road. Uh, it's probably a classic day bed for a bobcat. And, uh, here he probably has relative security. The bobcat probably has relative security from outside intrusion and uh, can rest during the day. When I found him, he was laying down on his right side. Uh, the gunshot wound was on the left side. And it looked as though he may have been trying to groom it, uh, as animals do a wound, uh, when I found him. And uh, obviously to no avail, infection and systemic failure set in. So I'm gonna move out of here a little bit. You might also note, that around where he was lying, there's leaves in here. These are uh, leaves that have come off the vines, dead leaves. And, um, except where he was laying. There's a number of ways he can come in here. One is he could come under this log here or in a couple inch ways over there. Pretty much anywhere out in this 120 degree arc, he could weave his way in. 
I suspect that when he did finally decide to come here, he was uh, limping um, on the bad leg because the gunshot wound did shatter his left hip and uh, this is this, uh, disintegrated the left hip joint to the leg, left leg. So he was on on three legs when he came in here. Not a big deal. Um, probably suffering quite a bit. I'll pull out of here and let uh, there's you. Move. Obviously, a human doesn't do too well. <laughs> As you can see, the top of the uh, day bed is covered in briar, not vines. Um, pretty good defense against uh, outside intruders. And this front side here is exposed to a marshy area, eventually goes into a couple of ponds. So uh, <clears throat> there's a number of game trails that come in around here, and you probably used any one of them to come in. I suspect that. He probably used his day bed repeatedly because he knew enough to come here when he was wounded. And when an animal is wounded, even though they are quite capable of still moving, they're still in pain. And what they need to do is find shelter and try to deal with their wounds as best as possible. And uh, so he probably used his day bed before, though it was not documented in my telemetry. Uh, he knew where it was and came right to it. And I'm sure other animals will use it, uh, other bobcats. In fact, the same bobcat used a den, about, uh, which is about a half mile from here, that was used uh, previously by a female and her kitten. So they get a feel for what is in their home range, where all the great den sites are at, as well as the routes to travel. And they pretty much know it like the back of their hand, like you know your own house. Okay, bring that camera in here close. Then I just shoot, put it in there, insert it in there all the way in. I have got it as just sort of like pan around. Yeah, this is about as focused as I can get it, but we're in there. I got some panoramics earlier while you were scrawling around down in there. Let's see if let's see if you can drop it down here and just like rake it to get it. I see the what constitutes a roof or a bunch of fallen trees. The point of view from the cap. It's like that. It commands a pretty good view of the entryway. If you had to, you could get out real quick. He felt like his safety was compromised in any way.